In the beginning, two cavemen discovered they could count with their fingers. This radical approach had great impact on data processing. Computing by hand, however, had certain limitations. And a new technique was developed, causing a virtual information explosion. This system eliminated dull, repetitive tasks, relieving workers for more creative endeavors. But the search continued for ever faster methods to get the right information in the right form for sound management decisions. The bookkeeping load was heavy. As the march of civilization continued, as man approached the age of space, mathematical calculations became more difficult. Management faced overwhelming problems. But the first adding machine was already on the drawing board. Soon it became a reality, solving complex problems for science and industry. In 1617, a Scottish mathematician named John Napier, working with numbered logs, discovered rhythms which he called logarithms. In 1822, an English mathematician named Charles Babbage invented a difference engine, which could have made quite a difference if it had worked. But now, many inventors, in trying to eliminate dull, repetitive tasks, were making tasks even duller and more repetitive. What changed the course of calculating? Punched cards. Rapid data processing. But rapid was not fast enough. In 1946, two American scientists named John W. Mockley and J. Presper Eckert gave technical leadership to a group which created a truly different approach to data processing. It was called electronic data processing. Recently, electricity had started running around with vacuum tubes, and Eckert and Mockley were with it. This amazing machine had 18,000 vacuum tubes. It could do 100 years of mathematical work in two hours. The only trouble was, tubes burned out. This somewhat interfered with the 100 years' work being done in two hours. But this was the present state of the art. Eckert and Mockley's electronic brainchild was called ENIAC, for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. It was something to see. A giant electronic brain has started cogitating at the University of Pennsylvania. It's made of vacuum tubes, like your radio, and it can add up a column of figures a yard long in a second. It's the world's first electronic computer. Right now, it's solving mathematical problems for the U.S. Army, but who knows? Someday a machine like this may check up on your income tax. But the 1946 newsreels did not tell the whole story. It began at the University of Pennsylvania before World War II, in 1941. At the university, the Moore School of Electrical Engineering had two Frieden calculators and a Bush differential analyzer. These machines were used in work for the United States Army Ordnance Department to compute firing tables for artillery. This work was done by graduate students under the supervision of Dr. John William Mockley, an associate professor of electrical engineering. In 1941, Dr. Mockley wondered if the new science of electronics could be applied to the ancient science of mathematics to make faster calculations. Dr. Mockley experimented, but since he was not an electronics expert, he needed help. He found the right man, a research associate named J. Presper Eckert. Together, Eckert and Mockley outlined an electronic computer that could, they hoped, perform at fantastic speed. They submitted their plan to U.S. Army Ordnance. World War II was on. Any idea for speeding work was welcome. Army Ordnance gave the University of Pennsylvania a six-month research contract for $61,700. This contract was renewed nine times for a total cost of $486,804.22. J. Presper Eckert was project engineer. 
Professor J.G. Brainerd, Supervisor. Sam Feltman, Ballistics Engineer. Captain Herman H. Goldstein, Liaison Officer. Dr. John W. Mockley, Consultant. Dean Harold Pender represented the Moore School. General G.M. Barnes and Colonel Paul N. Gillen represented the Ordnance Department. Dr. Mockley was 38 years old. Mr. Eckert was 26. Design began in July 1943 with only 12 engineers. Assembly began in June 1944. ENIAC was completed in 1946 after 200,000 man hours. ENIAC was 1,000 times faster than any other calculating machine ever built. It could do the work of 20,000 people working by hand. What a desk calculator could do in 20 hours, ENIAC could do in 30 seconds. It could discriminate the sign of a number and compare numbers for equality. It could add, subtract, multiply, divide, and extract square roots. In one second, it could add a five-digit number 5,000 times. ENIAC required a room 30 feet wide and 50 feet long. The 40 panels, side by side, would be 100 feet long. It weighed 30 tons. It required three times as much electricity as the largest broadcasting station. This wonderful machine devised by Eckert and Mockley and their colleagues had most of the components found in computers to this day. ENIAC's electronic gate, buffer, and flip-flop concepts are standard circuitry today. There is a great similarity between ENIAC and present computers. The thousands of tiny neon lights were arranged like an abacus to light up by 5,000 electronic pulses per second. The lights shown here were specially designed for demonstration purposes only. ENIAC was tested at the University of Pennsylvania and accepted by Army Ordnance in July 1946. At the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland, ENIAC began operating in August 1947. Soon it became a workhorse for solving the scientific problems of the nation. ENIAC worked with weather prediction, the hydrogen bomb, cosmic rays and wind tunnel design, among other things, in addition to ballistic tables for the United States Army and the United States Air Force. In building ENIAC, better methods had been found. And so, another was never built. At 11.45 p.m. on October 2nd, 1955, ENIAC's power was cut off. Stored at Aberdeen, components of the world's first electronic computer will probably be distributed to various museums. ENIAC lived long and served well. Meanwhile, Mr. Eckert and Dr. Mockley had designed another computer. It was called BINAC. BINAC was much faster than ENIAC, much cheaper to operate, and magnetic tape could be used instead of punched cards. BINAC led to UNIVAC. Now the Eckert-Mockley partnership joined the Remington Rand Company. Almost overnight, it seemed, electronic computers became big business. UNIVAC, a universal automatic computer, was delivered 10 years ago. The past 10 years have seen computers by many other companies. When the first electronic computer was planned, it was estimated that there could never be a market for more than two or three. Today, there are more than 5,000 computers. Computers are in business, in factories. Computers track our lives from the start to the finish. Computers are on the ocean and under the ocean and in the air and above the air. Can anyone say the sky is the limit? Now, whatever became of Eckerd and Mockley, who started the whole business of electronic computers? Mr. Eckerd, now a vice president of the Remington Rand Division of the Sperry Rand Corporation in New York City, is still searching for better and faster ways to solve problems for science and industry. When we first started building computers many years ago, 
we used to speak of milliseconds or a thousandth of a second. Then as we got into vacuum tube computers and various types of solid state computers and transistors, we used microseconds and fractions of microseconds. Now that we've got into tech, gone into technologies which use thin films and which use tunnel diodes and some of the newer elements, we are starting to deal with millimicroseconds, which is a billionth of a second. Mr. Eckert remains closely associated with Dr. Mockley, a consultant with his own company, Mockley Associates, in Ambler, Pennsylvania. What are you working on now, Dr. Mockley? I'm working on what interests me the most of all, that is the computer as a tool. We know that man's progress has been through the use of tools, whether they're carpenter's tools, machinist's tools, or the tools of language, the printing press. The most important tool the businessman has today is the general data processing facilities, the information processing of the electronic computer. A recent magazine article uh, has emphasized this new aspect of the computer use. The software is just as important as the hardware of the computer. In our own work, we have, for instance, found a great deal of advantage in a particular technique known as the critical path method of scheduling. This is an instance where the software has added much to the value of the computer for the use of management and industry. Of course, all this software wouldn't be of much use unless we were making advances in hardware, too. So, Press, come on in and tell us about the hardware. Well, I think that the main thing that's been happening on hardware in the last few years has just been to strive for more and more speed. Uh -huh. And I think that we've got to, to find some new ingredient in all this, which is probably going to be a new ingredient in software and one in hardware, which, uh, which doesn't just build the kind of arithmetic machine we've been building, but introduces some...